So in the first section here, this is about, really boils down to we're doing customer training to promote repeat business. Really like most things when we're talking B2B, it's about driving a return on investment for any activity. And it's, it's, you know, it's interesting coming at the customer education world as we do initially in the education space. We don't think ROI when we talk about teaching kids. We don't think ROI when we talk about and we think of ourselves as teachers. Um, but we need to. And even if we don't do it explicitly, like we need to when we justify relationships and business relationships and business dealings. Um, the fact of the matter is uh, we are doing it. Every minute that a teacher or an educator or a trainer spends has to be spent wisely. It's all about improving the value of every moment you spend together. So let's talk a little bit about training customers and how it can drive repeat business. You know, customers don't always know how to use our products. We like to think, and I talk to every, every 100 clients I talk to, 95 of them say our, our, our product is is simple or the UI is self-explanatory or it's idiot proof um, and you know various levels of derogatory or very positive ways of saying the same thing that we think it's going to be fine um, but we also still have customer support teams who answer questions so I think it's important to at the outset think about put ourselves in our learners seats on their side of the table and say okay if I'm a brand new user to this product or service, what is it going to be like if my level of English language is really poor? What is it going to be like if I have an attention deficit disorder? What is it going to be like if I'm a kinesthetic learner that needs to build things and interact with stuff versus um, someone who is auditory, versus someone who needs to write or see in order to do it? So I think it's really important to customer support and customer training from the point of view of an instructional designer or an educator and think we got to make sure that they can take advantage and they understand all of these features and benefits of our products because if they don't it sits on the shelf okay and what happens when our product sits on the shelf well it's a very short-sighted business person who says well I've got their revenue in this day and age where everything is software as a service, where there's ongoing service contracts, where there's ongoing um, recurring revenue from our clients, um, obviously if they're not using the product, they won't be buying again. But there's another softer and equally important part of, the, part of that conversation, which is our customers need to promote our products. They need to promote it within so that we can call back and cross-sell and upsell within our clients. And they need to promote it without. They need to be able to spread the word. We need their testimonials and you know we don't need to, I'm not going to go into inbound marketing, it's certainly not our bailiwick, but there's a lot of alignment there in making sure that our customers are successful long before we can think about them driving and behaving in such a way that's going to drive more business towards us. So as I promised, I'm going to walk through samples as I go through this. So on this page here, what I've got is a sample from a fantastic customer of ours, they're called Rudder. Um, they're an East Coast Canadian company that has some amazing radar um, detection and um, radar-based ship, ship-based radar products. And these are not products for the layperson. These are very complicated, sophisticated tools. And one of the interesting challenges that Rudder has is they can only deploy and subsequently train their customers when a ship is in port. So there was a lot of focus was we're working through the use case for Rudder and how to develop an online training program that was maximally effective on you know how what are these operators like how are they um, how do they like to learn what is their level of experience and level of training okay so uh, as I pull up here some of the notes here many screens lots of features and and it's a it's a high risk product in that it's doing a very important task and the trainees need to know what they're doing. So to walk through this experience, so you, what you see here is an embedded portion of this experience and thank you Rudder for uh, permitting us to share this. It's certainly not our natural state to share what we've done for our clients. We respect everyone's anonymity and exclusivity when appropriate but we asked for permission for this and all the subsequent samples. So here, end, here endeth the disclaimer. So a first time learner here will come to it and say, you know, what do you want to learn about? 
In fact, there's a first time users click here for an overview. And so there's a short video here, and you won't be able to hear the audio extremely clearly. And, and in fact, the audio isn't important. But there's a quick walkthrough here, and there's an easy way to navigate to get between the videos. So you can explore it in a very linear fashion, as some people like to do, or you can jump right to what I need. I need to get to range centering controls. I know the, the, the other guy told me the stuff is up here, and I don't remember exactly what it is. So I, training, I click on it, and then there's a short video. There's an exploded view of that part of the software, and a short video that walks them through immediately relevant, kind of just-in-time training. Okay, so I, I, this is a great example that kind of speaks to that, that need to identify the personality type, um, the behavior, and the use case of, your, of our clients, clients when we need to think about how to most effectively train them. So I'll move on to the next step here. So now let's talk about this idea of community idea of uh, community of ideas, and I, I hinted on the, at this already. You know, we're trying to ideally drive the behavior of our clients so that they say great things about us and spread the word and drive revenue and, and opportunities our way. But there's another advantage to providing a community and an outlet for our clients to interact, um, to get training, and 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 one of those benefits is. You know, customers can find creative ways to use our product, and they will also be able to help each other. So we, I think we probably all come to uh, the need for customer training with the, the ultimate vision that our product is so simple to use that, and we, that everyone will figure it out, and in a perfect world, client A will help client B um, with the basics of stuff, and in fact, maybe client C will come up with some ideas that we never even thought of. And it's quite possible to 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 um, to have that experience, but you need to stack the deck. You need to prime the pump. Um, whatever other appropriate analogy you want or uh, to use there is, um, so that the the feedback you get from your customer isn't just this isn't working, because it can all backfire if the community-based feedback is all negative. If people are all asking the same question and not finding an answer, so it's really important to leverage and support the community, uh, support the community before you're able to really effectively leverage its, its capability. So in, in this sample that I want to use uh, to talk through, this is a, a really fun um, thing that, that uh, my team built a couple of years ago. Uh, we were invited to host a robotics hands-on experience at the DevLearn conference a couple of years ago. So the idea here is, the attendees are not kids. The attendees have five minutes, and a lot of them are either instructional design or programming professionals. They want to get their hands dirty, do something fun. And, and the, I think one of the underlying concepts behind the whole, the whole conference was you know, hands-on learning. And so what we built was an experience where in a few minutes, people could come by, build something out of Lego, and interact with the programming experience and do something cool and have that fun experience. But it needed to be five minutes long. It's a, it's a tough task when, you know, this is usually a multi-week experience, you know, maybe for kids, so maybe a month or several months for adults, but what we built was an interactive experience that needed to be able to, to self-run, okay? So this here, you know, we're hovering over different parts of the training experience to see different notes to tell us what to do. We can click play to start watching the experience. Um, and, and the idea, again, like the, the previous example for Rudder, is providing a framework for our customers to discover and easily consume the support material we want to give them. Make it fun, easy, and engaging, and interactive is at the heart of all of that. 